Hi everyone, it's Paola. So I am going to be talking about an artist today. I thought I would start a new series, kind of. Let me know if you want this to be a series. But I thought I would talk about an artist or designer that really inspires me and then tell you about them so we can kind of have a little educational thing. I studied art history along with graphic design, so I'm like really into art history and like all the artists that came before and the impact they had on the future of art. And so I thought I would just talk about an artist that I really like and that has inspired me in my work or someone that I just really greatly respect for what they've done and tell you all about them and then try to create why am I moving my hand so much? But <laughs> I'm gonna try to create something that's like inspired by them as well. So it's kind of gonna be like a little history lesson then you're gonna have a little art inspiration. It's like all around good for inspiration too to learn about other artists. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. If you want this to be a series where I talk about other artists, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and letting me know in the comments another artist that you would like to see. It's not going to be like an every week video, but of course I'm going to be posting more because that's what I'm trying to do, even though I'm failing at it. But we are going to do this in a series occasionally. So yeah, let me know if you want to see it by giving me a thumbs up. And let's go. So the artist we're going to be talking about is Barbara Kruger. Barbara Kruger is a artist. <laughs> obviously, uh, but she is a graphic artist, so basically a graphic designer, but a lot of people defined her as a collage artist and a photographer, and she's just covered a lot of different mediums, but mostly what I've seen of her work is basically graphic design, because obviously we know graphic design can be a whole bunch of stuff. It's not just one thing, it's not just on the computer, because Barbara Kruger was really active in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Most of her notable works are from the 1980s and she is an amazing, amazing graphic designer. She did a lot of collage art and that's what she's known for mostly and it's just super, super inspirational as a graphic designer to see her work and what it was and what it is. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I first learned about Barbara Kruger from my contemporary art history class. Uh, I took it as a summer class, which was a mistake, but it was a very, very interesting class and it was probably my favorite art history um, just for the content. But this contemporary was very, very interesting to me because it was a lot of the 20th century just like covering, breaking down all these different decades and what they were and what they were classified as, which I thought was really interesting because it really told the story of where art was going and then what, why it became what it is today. Um, so if you ever have the opportunity to take a contemporary art class, take it, it's so, so interesting. So when I first learned about Barbara Kruger, it was the appropriation section of the class. Um, so basically the 1980s were considered the decade of appropriation in art. And appropriation stands for like the usage of other people's work and other mediums to create new art. Uh, so it was kind of like this neo-conceptual thing, but it wasn't just like stealing. Like it wasn't just like, oh yeah, like I like that, I'm gonna copy it. It was like utilizing things that have come before to reappropriate them, appropriation, there you go, into new art. And a lot of this art was very critical. Uh, it was critical of the culture. Um, of course, like the 70s and 80s was definitely like the counterculture movement and going against the grain and critiquing what was the norm. So art at that time, obviously because art was always the leader of, of pushing boundaries uh, in art. So the art movement of this time was definitely critiquing what was considered normal, what was considered good, and it was like, um, okay, here, like, let's throw this in your face, like, we ain't good over here, you know? So, that's what it was basically doing. Appropriation was definitely critiquing by using all these different imagery and, and pieces of society. And you definitely have to think about what the culture was at that time in the 1980s. So, like, the 1980s were a time of shoulder pads, even though I cut these out. I think this blazer is from the 80s, but I cut the shoulder pads out of it. <laughs> but seriously, the 1980s were a time of 
a lot of wealth, a lot of greed, and it was this big time where people wanted to have a social status. And I feel like art at that time was really, really going against that, and they're like, okay, why is the culture shifting? Why do we all care about this picture-perfect life or having it all? And it was very, very against the grain with art at this time because it wasn't perfect. The 80s weren't perfect and everyone was keeping up this facade. I think it's also interesting too to see what artists were doing in the age of technology rising, of course like computers and the internet and all that, but uh, a lot of the times like graphic designers were all still doing a lot of things by hand and Barbara Kruger was doing things like silk screening and collage art and taking things from magazines and photos and using this black and white imagery 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 from like the 50s and stuff and so it was an interesting time to see that go from handmade to digital which of course like a lot of people do like digital collaging now so I think it's interesting that we've seen that progression from the 1980s to now so when I first learned about Barbara Kruger I was honestly floored I had never seen an artist or even thought about artists that were graphic designers in a time that wasn't like digital and now um, and I don't know why I just never even thought about like the historical context of graphic design or like people who have come before me and I found Barbara Kruger so amazing for what she was doing but also what she was representing her work is honestly really really amazing it is very very consistent so when you see a Barbara Kruger work you can definitely tell that it's her uh, she used a lot of black and white imagery and she used why can't I say the word imagery today? Imagery, imagery, imagery. So she used a lot of black and white imagery and she put it in with a lot of like red and she has like this black, white, and red theme and what she called lipstick red, which I thought was interesting because it was like this idea of femininity coming in with the harshness of maybe the words or the photo or what it all means. It's very interesting that she used this color that she thinks is like, oh, you know, like lipstick red. It's classic. It's a woman. It's feminine. So her most popular work, I would say, one of her most notable things is from 1989 and it's called Your Body is a Battleground. And I feel like it is just really, really intense. And I feel like her whole meaning behind it is that women, especially in the 1980s, but even today, are going through a lot and they have to deal with a lot and they have to face a lot of challenges every day. And it's just this idea of being a woman and maybe not being in control of your body and having to deal with other people making choices for you. And she's definitely commenting, commentating? I don't know, she's commenting, she's critiquing the culture. So she is doing exactly what appropriation art is doing in, in the 1980s. She's completely saying like, okay, what are we doing here? What is society saying about women? What kind of changes are they imposing on women? Like, what are people voting for to change and be in charge of women's bodies? So I think it's really interesting that she critiques this and of course with that lipstick red color, just like the whole idea of like being a woman and being feminine and just like having it all, you know, like the 80s. And I just feel like it is the perfect example of appropriation art and really embodies what Barbara Kruger was trying to do. And her works are not just little small prints. They are so big. They are like the biggest scale things. I actually saw Your Body is a Battleground at the Broad Museum in LA when I went in June for VidCon. I went to the Broad and I was like, I'm so excited to see all of the Barbara Kruger stuff. And I did and it was like emotional for me. Like I got to see it and just seeing it on such a big scale, like feet, like, like it feels like it's like 10 feet tall. I, I don't think it is, but it, it feels huge. And it just was so overwhelming to like see that work and how powerful it is when it's just like right there in your face. Overall, her work is very, very confrontational and it's very, very important that we have art that is confrontational because we can't really change as a society without thought-provoking media and thought-provoking pieces and just opening our minds and expanding our minds to see more and see different perspectives. So this art was definitely very important and Barbara Kruger was an amazing, amazing, not was, is an amazing, amazing graphic designer and artist and she just like really, really inspires me. And now I'm going to create something that is inspired by her. It'll probably look a little a little weird but you know what we're just gonna do something fun and like you can do it too now that you know about Barbara Kruger 
you can create something inspired by her. So it's like a little like art project that you can do this week. Um, so yeah, that is what I'm going to do now. We're going to design something. Okay, so now we have done everything that we were going to do today, and I hope you like this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on the bell so you can, like, know when I'm posting. And I'm also, like, using the community tab now because I just got it. So now I'm going to be posting, like, on the little community things. Keep an eye out for, like, posts from me. And I will see you in my next video. Bye! Like, I loved it. I even wrote in my notes, like in my notebook at school, I wrote INCREDIBLE in all caps next to my notes. I'm like, why am I always writing weird notes to myself? Like, I'm not gonna read these later, but uh, look, I did.